Greetings, so today is September 28th, and you may notice I'm not in my regular room. This is actually a hotel room. I'm staying at, in my, my usual hotel in Tokyo, and it's a nice discount hotel. I don't get my own, uh, you know, bath or, or restroom or anything, but it's just a small little place, but I like it because it's cheap and, you know, I don't mind having to wait in line to use showers or whatever. So, oh, y you notice my shirt? Why, well, yes, actually, this is my Primed Model Works Limited Edition Glow in the Dark t-shirt. What? What's that? You mean to say you don't have a Primed Model Works Limited Edition Glow in the Dark t-shirt? Well, I guess not all of us can be that special as me, but I have one, and so does everyone I know and respect. So, yeah, I'm teasing. No, actually, um, I, I got this uh, a couple of days ago in the mail, so, yeah, thanks. So, yeah, check out Prime Model Works. He's got a YouTube channel, and, uh, yeah, if you don't, you're... Or a big cockapoo head. So I am in Tokyo. I am attending the. Oh yeah, by the way, yeah, it does glow in the dark. Okay, so you can just shut up because it totally does. And if you don't believe me, then you're dumb. You, you don't believe me? Hold on. Check this out. It glows in the dark! Oh my gosh, dude. Wait, where's the light switch? I'm scared. I'm, I'm poisoned. Okay, so my battery on my camera ran out, and um, I just went ahead and just charged, because I, I went through three batteries today with my camera. I charged my battery, and I went to go take a shower, and it's like a couple hours later or so. So I'm ready to, to continue doing this video. I got a whole bunch of pamphlets. Um, first thing, that's really cool. Plum. I had a little tiny small corner booth at the show today. I'm happy to see them presenting at this event. This is the first time I've seen them. I told the guy, I talked with the, the guy who does the, the plastic models and um, talked to him about my R-Type. And, uh, I like, gosh, I really need to get back to that R-Type Arrowhead. Oh, well. Anyhow, so, um, I, oh, yeah, I got a tap on the shoulder. It was, uh, Todd from Hobby Link Japan. He said that, uh, say, hey, have you seen the, the new Crusher Joe fighter over at the Hasegawa booth? I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Really cool. And I, I have the, here we go. Very, very cool. Where is, uh. There we go. This is it. Crusher Joe. And guy of notes. Uh, they're going to have uh, paints for this as well. They're going to have um, uh, blue paint, like a, like a dark gray for the engine and such, and red paint. So obviously that means that there will be uh, a release of the red Crusher Joe. And I'm sure they're going to have an Alphine pilot figure that comes with that as well. So, what else? Actually, I was kind of a little bit... You know, I, I was expecting maybe more previews. Uh, no, the, the Bandai Star Wars, they had a lot to show. So, there, there was no previews of any sort of upcoming larger kits at all. Except for 112th stuff. Well, they have the, the, the Shadow Trooper or whatever coming as a 1 6 scale. And also as, as the 1 12th scale. And that's, that's going to be the premium pound die. And I'm not really, really into that. Um, they, they had the, the new Dark Vader there. And I don't think that's out yet. Um, they're coming out with the vehicle collection, the 350 scale Millennium Falcon. This one is going to be the a New Hope version. Or sorry, the 
uh, Empire Strikes Back version because the old one was New Hope, and there was a mirror underneath that showed the. Uh, you can count the. It has five landing gear bays, so that that's cool. A whole bunch of uh, uh, astromech proposals. I was really happy to see that. Uh, I talked to uh, Mr. Nagasawa again for for a while. He's um, the, responsible for the, the Star Wars kits. He was telling me though that they're planning on releasing these these astromech kits with these the so-called marking seals or as we would call them stickers and I'm like you know you can't really do any weathering on top of those they're, they're really not I mean the water slide decals are really the best and you include both of them and he's like well you know eh, I get concerned about costs I guess so um, Although I was told, though, by somebody at uh, Alshima, that uh, a friend of mine that has, has experience with this, he said that the uh, water slide decals are actually cheaper than stickers. So, I don't know. Anyhow, I, I would rather them just not bother with the stickers at all, because I just ugh, don't, don't care for those at all. Um, anyhow, um, gosh, I talked to... Uh, Mr. Suzuki for quite a while. He's the, the president of Fine Molds, and I'm really honored actually that he, uh, well, it was towards the end of the day, and he, he talked my ear off for like at least may, maybe uh, close to an hour, I think, um, that he would spend time just to talk to me. That was really cool. You know, he speaks really fast, and I, I had a hard time understanding some of his, his Japanese quite a bit. But I was still kind of able to uh, to understand him, and uh, it was really cool. He was he's talking about how like World War II really thrust Japan into the modern age. Now, of course, plenty of Americans before coming before becoming soldiers, they had shot guns and such as private citizens before entering the army. But of course, the Japanese soldiers never had that experience, and so they were firing guns. And not only that, but a lot of them, they never even wore shoes before. And they were wearing, like, those, uh, the geta, those, uh, those wooden sandals and such. Those, those really primitive, uh, wooden shoes, the, the sandals. They never really even, uh, wore boots before. Um, he told me about, there was one ace pilot who, he could fly airplanes, but he couldn't drive a car. Um, you know, the farm farmers and such they didn't have any sort of a machinery or anything like that he said that like after the after the war when the bulldozers came like uh, he said that uh, somebody in Osaka had mentioned when, when they saw the bulldozers like well those are pretty funny looking tanks I can't believe that uh, the Americans defeated us with those tanks and uh, <laughs> it's a really interesting story because they never seen a bulldozer before I mean they had them in Japan but they were just you know nowhere to be found and uh, it's not like they had TV or whatever at the time. So, really interesting talking with him. So, uh, I'm going back tomorrow, and I'm going to see what there is to purchase after the show. Oh, I, well, yeah, I talked to a lot of people, the, guy, the guys at Beaver, um, Hobby Link. Um, so I went to... I went to the, uh, the Alshima booth, and it's like, all around me are familiar faces. Um, people are there great, just one guy, he's a total asshole, but that's a different story. I'm not going to talk about that on my YouTube channel, he's a total dick. But, um, that's, yeah, anyhow, uh, but, yeah, the, the rest of the people there are really cool to talk with, and it was, uh, nice times. So... Um, I, yeah, after the show, I went to Akihabara, I, the only places I hit up, uh, actually I, I just went to Leonardo, because I saw something back in July, and I'm like, dude, I, I want this, you know, uh, I didn't buy it at the time, and I was thinking, well, you know, if it's still there, I want to go back and look for it, they still have it, I can't believe this, this is amazing. This is the Star Trek TMP, the 537 scale Enterprise refit from, you know, the first movie. This is the smoothie. 
the much coveted smoothie enterprise. The decals are gone. There's there's no decals in here at all. Now it, it, this is actually it's the uh, the lighting kit in here, but it's got those little creative wheat bulbs. I'm not gonna use this lighting kit. I'll just use my own. But yeah, this is it here. It's probably I'm guessing it probably doesn't work. But yeah, it's smooth. For those of you who are watching this and you don't know what I'm talking about, when the Wrath of Khan came out, they uh, they they permanently altered the the molds to this kit. They put like this this faux Aztec pattern with grid lines which are not even accurate to the movie at all. They were just totally random and they, they look like crap. But this is the smoothie. This is the much coveted smoothie. I only paid 3,100 yen for this. Normally, I've seen these go for uh, maybe on eBay like $100 US or so or maybe more. It was just sitting there for like 3,100 yen. I'm like, yeah. I asked him to take the shrink wrap off though, because I wanted to make sure this is what I thought it was. And sure enough, this is the smoothie. Now, because this is the smoothie, you know the the um, they just recently re-released the old uh, you know kit again. The round two has right with AMT. Um, they can't undo the changes that they made to the molds. It's just not not cost effective at all. They'd rather just focus on the 350. But they went ahead and just you know reissued the the, the 537 all over again recently. Um, this you could do the what is called the the Raytheon effect, which is like you know if you've seen the movie, you got like this this light that shines out over. The, the, the surface, right? What you could do is when you're light blocking, you know, just kind of like just make out a little section that's not light blocked so that it the, the glow will shine through the plastic and it's kind of like a, like a fake, um, like a, a light shining because it's kind of maybe hard to get the, the, the little LED to shine onto the, the saucer. It's called the Raytheon effect because I think somebody called, he was calling himself Raytheon online and then the actual company didn't like that because, you know, Raytheon, they're like a defense contractor company and uh, he had to change his name, but it's called the Raytheon effect, whatever. Um, so yeah, this is the, the better one to get and I got it for like a third of what it might cost. So the box is a bit smushed. I'm not going to use the lighting kit. I'm going to use LEDs, but yeah, really cool. And again, HDA Model Works is coming out with a complete set of of uh, replacement parts. Leonardo, I got uh, yet another fine mold X-wing. You know, I like them. If you don't, you know, whatever. Eat to each his own. I found another Academy. Warhawk? Uh, I'm probably, this is my mental illness showing, okay? I mean, I already have one of these, I just got another one. Whatever. It's in great condition. Now, this I don't have. This is another 48 scale P40. This is my hobby craft. Now, it has different decals that the others you don't find anywhere else. Um, unfortunately, this didn't have decals in it. I looked. They don't have them. So I told the clerk, like, you know, there's no decals in here. Could you uh, mark it down? So yeah, he, he, he bumped it down 500 yen. So I have a new P-40 Tiger Shark uh, Warhawk. And I don't know if this is the B or the C. Um, I don't think it even says, but I got this. So that's really cool. Um, that's it for now, so I'm going to continue this video when I get home tomorrow. So a week has passed. It is now October 6th. Uh, yeah, so I... Okay, so I took the Shinkansen. Oh, I'm sorry. 
the bullet train. Um, I, I, I usually use words, I, I, I use Japanese words, and I, I have to think about, you know, whether or not people will understand them or not. Um, like, I, I, I send snacks to people, to friends and such, like, like, uh, Rebels of Cloud9 or Gyrus, and they get these snacks and they don't know what they are, because I, I forgot to, you know, translate it for them. Anyhow, when I went to the hobby show, I took the Shinkansen, <laughs> the, the, the bullet train, and while I was walking to the station, like, on the side of the road, there's, like, this gutter, right? And they have, like, this, this metal grate that covers the gutter, right? And I was just walking on top of that, katun, 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 and then, the, but there was a gap. And I, I stepped in, I, I, I really fell hard on my knee, my, my left knee. And I also uh, hit this hand really hard, too. And so I, I was able to get up. Uh, I did a whole lot of work walking that day, and I could walk just fine. I did a lot of walking that day, but I was limping going up and down stairs. I was limping pretty bad. So, yeah, I hurt my, my, my leg really, really bad that morning. Um, when I got to the, the, the platform where the where the bullet train was, was pulling up, right? I, I just grabbed like a, a cold drink and I just held it on my hand to kind of reduce the swelling. And so, yeah, I was afraid that when I was going to wake up the next morning after I had, you know, videoed the, the last part you just saw, I was afraid that I was going to wake up and be kind of immobile. I wouldn't be able to move my, my leg at all. Fortunately, I did better, you know, because I actually went to the, the drugstore and I got some stuff to put on my knee and such. And I was also, uh, I, I put a supporter on my knee to help out. So, uh, that was Saturday morning when I woke up. I went to the, the, the show and um, had a great time. That is when people are there, though. The Saturday and Sunday is when it's open to the public. And uh, there was a typhoon coming in, and it was starting to rain, and I wanted to just kind of leave early and uh, kind of beat a lot of the rain. So I got back home, and it, fortunately it wasn't raining in, in uh, you know, where I live. Because the, the bullet train station is just like the next town over from where I live. So, uh, the plan was that we're going to eat uh, yakiniku, which is Korean barbecue for dinner. And I stopped by the store to pick up some food for, for dinner. And I hadn't eaten anything. For like Friday and Saturday, I had skipped lunch entirely when I was at the show. So Saturday morning, all I had was like this little apple pie kind of a thing for breakfast and like some, some uh, uh, vegetable juice for breakfast. And so I hadn't eaten anything whatsoever. Um, I stopped by the store, and it's funny. There was this guy. He was a he was a foreigner guy, and he was kind of looking at me. And I'm like, what? Um, he, I swear, John Podesta look alike. I felt like asking him. So would I do better playing dominoes on cheese or pasta? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> didn't say it, but he, I swear he looked just like John Podesta. I swear it's like. Dude, wow, he could, yeah, he could probably win a contest for, uh, you know, who's who's um, your uh, your your favorite Pizza Gate star, you know? See if uh, he, he can dress up like John Podesta as uh, for for Halloween, you know? Say you think you're hot shit, don't you? Anyhow, so we ate dinner, and but before I even started eating. I was just like my my leg hurt and I just wanted to just relax, right? So I had I made a couple of highballs, and it really went to my head because I hadn't eaten anything at all all day long, and so we were watching the Muppet Show. I have like season two on DVD, so we were watching that and I was just just cracking up and um, I just you know when it, when 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 I get drunk I just get kind of like you know sleepy and just kind of like. Just, I just laugh a lot, and I just want to just just hug on my family and love on them. I mean, I know some people, they get nasty or so when they uh, become intoxicated. 
But really, it wasn't the amount that I did. It, that was not the problem at all. It was just the fact that I had, like, nothing in my stomach. I just wasn't careful, I guess. So, um, yeah. Anyhow, it's funny. When, when I'm at that point, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to try to think of something, like, witty and intelligent to say to, you know, convince my wife I'm not that drunk. And then I'm watching the Muppet show, and I'm like, ah, Kermit, ha <laughs> Yeah, it didn't uh, didn't work out. So, uh, the whole oh yeah, that's right. I I was like I stayed up, like between like eleven o'clock at night until like close to four a.m. I uh, because I was just kind of just out of it. I was playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two with like the 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 survival missions. I was playing on like the hardest level in uh, like the the Rio de Janeiro level and every time those those dogs are just they got me i mean they're like hey that's a nice throat you got there <laughs> oh, it sucks to be you and it's just really really hard i was playing it i'm like i'm like okay, i'm gonna beat this i'm gonna beat this and it was like getting close to four in the morning i'm like i can't believe this this is just way too much compulsive behavior and uh i felt really bad about that and i'm like yeah i need to go to sleep so i probably fell asleep at about four o'clock and then at 6 30 i woke up and I wasn't feeling well, of course, and um, I wasn't like bowing before the porcelain throne or anything, but I just just felt kind of constipated or whatever, probably just because I was dehydrated, I guess. Um, so yeah, and I couldn't fall back asleep after that. So I did um, a Skype with with some of my modeling fair, model, my modeling friends that morning. This is Sunday, and I just was not in the mood to to, to do the rest of this video at all. So, during the week, I've recorded some stuff that I have, uh, uh, you know, just showing stuff that I've got. So, let me show you that next. Okay, so, um, on my second day at the Hobby Show, I picked up this. This is Fine Molds. They have, um, I, I already have the one for the flankers, right? This is the, the seat belts. They're not photo etched, but they are plastic, and they're super thin. They're really nice, really highly detailed. This is for the F-14. So, yeah, I'm going to um, hopefully get the, the Fine Molds F-14 Tomcat. And I... First, however, I want to finish the Hasegawa one. So I've been kind of working on the Hasegawa one. You know, it's... It's an older kit, it has raised panel lines and all that, so it's not that, you know, it's not going to be that uh, that great of a kit compared to the fine molds one, but since I started it a few years ago, I figured I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, keep working on that. Uh, something else I got at the, at the show, this is by Hobby Boss, 72nd scale SU-47 Barracoot, and... This is a really, really cool looking kit. I always get a kick over, you know, a kick out of the, uh, the forward swept wings, but it looks to be a pretty simplistic kit. Not that that's bad or anything, but what I mean is that it doesn't have a very, very high part count. So, yeah, pretty neat stuff. Okay, so. The next day after I got back from the show, I got a package from Mark, aka Event Horizon Models. Let me show you here. Gave me this really great t shirt Griffin Hobbies and RC. He gave me this t shirt. He owns a hobby shop, actually. And uh, he lives in, the, the, it's in the, the Vancouver area. So if you're if you live uh, anywhere close to there, check it out. Oh my gosh, if you don't, you suck. Um, he sent me some pretty cool stuff in the package. Look at this. Oh my gosh. This is the Bronco Models 148 scale Flying Tigers. Now, there have been pretty cool unboxings already, you know, uh, so I'm not going to spend any time on that. Um, 
Oh shoot, what's his name? Michael. <laughs> what's his name? What's his... I can't remember the name of his, his channel, but he did a... Uh, an unboxing of this. This is really cool. The color instructions. You have the option to build like what, how many different uh, Flying Tigers kits here? Um, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you do get decals for six different Flying Tigers. Oh my gosh, you would almost be tempted to buy this kit many times, however, this kit is very expensive. Uh, but here you go, this is really cool, this is like uh, the blood shit. Oh, 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 and what's really fantastic is that this kit contains decals for the blood shit. You know, let me uh, go ahead and take this out. You know what, no, I'm not going to do it. Um, but this this has the decals for the blood shits for the back of like uh, the pilots and unfortunately it doesn't come with any pilot figures sitting or standing. But anyhow, uh, some people have uh, pointed out multiple times that there are proportion problems with this kit, but this has like a full, f fully detailed uh, engine and everything. It has uh, you know nice nice panel lines and and rivets and everything. I think it looks beautiful. Um, the the sag here on the, the what do you call them the flaps and such they they might need to be sanded down because it's a little bit too pronounced. But you know if the cockpit floor is is rounded and it's not supposed to be or vice versa you know what I, mean, I guess I don't care too much. Um, the cockpit canopy looks fine to me, but you know uh, maybe I'm not uh, that much of an expert on P40 Warhawks. All I know is that I love them. So this is the P40C. And I just think that's really fantastic. So yeah, you can um, maybe get a whole bunch of other <laughs> P40 Warhawks. Maybe the cheaper ones would be like the Airfix kit, which is a really fantastic kit. Um, it'd be interesting to compare that kit with this kit. Um, of course, the Airfix one does not have uh, in yeah, the uh, inter not interior, the, the engine, but, you know, whatever. Okay, so, uh, Mark also got this for me. This is the Revell Master Series Fine Molds Model Kit of the 48 scale TIE Fighter. Dude. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Van Dye has yet to, you know, make any, uh, 48 scale TIE Fighter. Um, hopefully they'll make a Y-Wing and a TIE Fighter eventually, but, uh, yeah. So anyhow, this is, uh, you know, I've, I have built the, uh, the 72nd scale Interceptor by Fine Mold, so I am pretty intimate with the kit that way. Um, the difference is that, well, I think this thing in the back is a little bit deeper, but it's mostly identical. Uh, except that this actually, you have like an actual canopy frame here. Whereas on the 72nd scale, you get these little masks, and you just paint the clear plastic. This one, you actually, it's separate, so I think that's really great. That is super neato. And, uh, so yeah, you don't get the masks, because you don't need them. Or, you know what, you can, if you want to, if, you know, like, Bondi gives you the option of not doing any clear. Um, you can do that with this kit, apparently. So, isn't that great? Solar panels, looking nice. Here are the clear parts. Again, no masking is really required. And your decals. So, I imagine these are the same as the fine molds, except that um, they're printed out by, by uh, Ravel, I guess. But, there you go. Uh, this kit... Is, I, I can't find this in Japan anymore. It's, it's become so rare that... I was tempted to uh, just get the, the Revell reboxing because, you know, Fine Molds doesn't have the license for Japan anymore. They don't, they're not even going to, you know, try to compete with Bandai at this point. But they do, or they were, until Revell got in trouble. So I don't know what the status of that that uh, relationship is now that it's the Revell's been bought out by this Atlantic model. But... Anyhow, uh, he got this for a really good price for me. 
So I'm super happy. So thank you so much for Mark um, for uh, for sending this to me. And it really kills me to, to see how much it ship it costs to, to ship from Canada and the United States to Japan because it's just it's not fair because I can ship stuff a lot more cheaply. But anyhow, it is what it is. So thank you so much for this, Mark. You are a great guy. And if you uh, don't know, yeah, he does the uh, uh, check it out. Uh, Event Horizon. Uh, he, he he does really cool stuff. And what really caught my eye with his channel is that he does a lot more. Um, uh, what what would be the word? Uh, just a um, a lot. He 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 takes the path less traveled. He he does a lot of unique kits that you don't see other people doing. And I think that's why uh, uh, a lot of people are interested in my channel is because I do that. So anyhow, um, yeah, moving on. This is a really neat product. Uh, this is Mr. Color Replenishing Agent. Comes in that half size bottle. And it, it says down here, this product is a replenishing agent for restoring Mr. Color that has higher viscosity or is dried in a bottle. So I have had some paints. Actually, I just used this product for the first time uh, on a couple of paints that were really, really thick. And uh, I think the last time I used those paints, uh, maybe a few weeks ago, they were so thick that they gummed up inside my, my airbrush and uh, they, they wouldn't mix properly. Anyhow, this stuff here it reactivates and of course it only is to be used on Mr. Color lacquers but it reactivates the paint and makes it like new again it's really really great um, if, if you use Mr. Color lacquers definitely get this stuff um, I, it's, it's, it's a shame that I don't know I, I've never seen anything like this for Tamiya or uh, Mr. Hobby Aquia stuff but I, I use this on um, two paints just tonight and it they work really nice because you don't really want to use lacquer because you know that will reactivate it too but if you're not going to be using it up real soon you know it, it's gonna just gunk up and become crappy again so that's what the stuff is for it's really great I like it yeah um, something else I guess so I can show you real quick I picked these up at my local um, stationery store Turner Acryl Gouache this is Jet Black Burnt Sienna and Burnt Umber I figured I can use these for weathering uh, especially on um, sensitive Bondi or ABS plastic I'm um, just going to use these the, because they're acrylic artist paints instead of the oil based artist paints that would require turpentine. These you can just use um, maybe just your typical Tamiya acrylic thinner or maybe even just water for weathering. So yeah, uh, it's all in English, but it says it's made in Japan. Turner Color Works Limited. Uh, these are used a lot with uh, students. So I don't know if you can get this where you live, but uh, there you go. Uh, when I was in, in Tokyo, I saw the uh, at Volks they were they were selling this stuff, and one of the the, stage, the, the store employees recommended that I I, I get this. So, um, it's safe for those really sensitive plastics. Uh, stuff I'm working on. I'm almost done with this guy here. Uh, pretty much almost done. Got the Minmay. I just need to do her eyes. I have completed doing the foil on the Eggplane Girls van. All I need to do is just kind of uh, just uh, wet sand it a little bit on top because it's you know it's not perfect up there. And once I do that, then I'll be able to polish it, and it's going to look nice, and hopefully I'm done. Unfortunately, along the top here, there was a bit of an air bubble that went along here. Oh, well. Uh, this is my first time doing a decal that large.
but oh well, it's a learning experience. So, yeah. So this is pretty incredible. This is the new Ginga from Yamato 2202. I have not yet seen the episode in which this ship debuts, but my gosh, this is a pretty fantastic ship. So this is the, like a sister ship to the Yamato. As this was also the the Musashi, which is from a, like one of the more recent movies before 2199 came out. But I I don't know. I've never seen it, so I can't pretend to really know. All right, and you know I'm not gonna show you the instructions. <clears throat> Here is, uh, you know I might as well. What the hell? So this is what it looks like. All right, so you got like this big observation dome or whatever you, you have like this other this uh observation deck here and then there's like the, the, the command actually no this i think it's probably the command deck and then this is like a like a flight deck or something rather i don't know but this has light pipes to light all this stuff up and you can put in a, a light here and it comes with i don't know who this captain is who's she from is she from the show i I mean, like some of these other people, you, of course you recognize them, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, so they were kind of like left behind in like the, the, the third episode of Yamato or so, when they, the, the crew steals the Yamato. So it has like this uh, uh, special Cosmo Zero. It's called... Uh, I guess it's just called a Cosmo Zero. That's a blackbird. Pretty cool looking. So yeah, the, the distinctive feature, or one of the distinctive features, of course, is this uh, looks like a flight deck on top, uh, with this this big huge bulb here. But apparently these are all windows that can be lit up, in theory. But I looked at the parts, and that might be a little bit difficult. Now it comes with a uh, little lighting kit, but uh, where's the instructions on that? Uh, to light up the the like the wave motion cannon and such, you'd have to get the special lighting kit for that. So like here's your lighting your light pipe for the I think it's this goes to the main canyon uh, cannon. It comes with one of these LED units here and that will light up the bridge. But to light up the engines and such, you're going to have to buy a separately sold unit here. So this has two lights, one for the back engine, and the other one goes to the wave motion cannon. And it shows you how to put the lights, uh, the you know, the, the wires and such for the lights easily enough. Now, this is uh, fairly interesting. You see here, so you get this diffuser here that goes underneath it, which is cool. And you can use either a clear for the dome, or you got this thing here, which is like a like a translucent blue. I'm not really getting why they do that, but there you have it. And you also have these light pipes here. And uh, this is for your your your, uh, your command deck and such. This this these are what these parts are here for. So yeah, it comes with these light pipes. And you got some more light pipes in this package here, because that that's what these are. And you got this uh, orange light pipe here. I think this is what goes to the the wave motion cannon decals. All right, so. The parts, now I have the 2199 Yamato, I do not have the 2202 Yamato, and apparently this is, I'm guessing, is probably uh, pretty close to the 2202. It might even possibly use some of the same runners, I'm guessing. Guessing, I don't know. I can't compare the two, so I have no idea. Um, well, you have like this little, I don't want to call it firewall, but you know, 
whatever. Now, so it comes with this LED unit here, and what they use like LR41 batteries, I guess. And so, yeah, as it is, you can just light up just the the windows of the command tower, and that's it. Here you see this, I guess, is where that light pipe fits into. The, that would be this part here. I guess that's what that, that does there. And so you can have the, uh, the LED unit here going in here, okay? Again, uh, I don't know. I, I've, I've seen, like, uh, what Jim had, he had done some of the, the, the Yamato, like he did the, the, the Dreadnought and such, and it's cool that they have lighting for it, but you have to, like, take the model apart just to get to the switch to turn it on. And then when you're done, you have to take it apart again to switch it off. I'm not so keen on that. I think I might try to do the wiring myself. But because you have, like, this internal structure, which these parts snap onto, I'm not so... I don't know. I don't know how I can light up these these windows here. I don't know. I'd have to do, like, some test fits to see, but let me open this up here. <sighs> yeah, this has got to be kind of difficult. Now, the 2199 is, is pretty empty on the inside, so it should be pretty easy to light up, but you, as you can see here, this thing is in the way. So if I wanted to light up this uh, observation bubble here, the, the Yamato has this as well. I would have to just cut all of this out. And for these these windows here, you got these to inter interfere with. So I'm not sure. I mean, this it looks like this is going to just fit. It's going to snap right onto that, that light pipe thing. I don't know if I can just forego that or what. I, I really don't know. Um, I'm hoping that uh, Dorobo Hige is going to be doing this kit for Model Graphics Magazine, and I can see how he did it and follow suit. But, um, yeah, I, I need to get a good idea on, on how I'm supposed to light these up. So I was hoping, because, you know, if, if you're going to do, like, a Starship Enterprise kit, you would drill out all of these windows, and then you could just light them up from the inside and then put in some, like, uh, canopy glue into the holes and let them dry up that way. But with all of the snap internal stuff, that might be a little bit difficult to do. So, yeah, here's the, uh, uh, the flight deck, apparently. The, the, the command tower goes here. You have some more windows here. I don't know if, if I would be able to light these up or not. You know, I had lots of ideas. And then when you actually get the kit, it's kind of a little bit different that way, you know? kind of changes things. But you have more of these. And I think these are supposed to light up on the bottom here. Yeah. Yeah, see, look at that. They're lit up in the picture. So, who knows? Who knows? Now, this does not come with a Mecha Collection Kit like the 2199 did. But, you know, it's okay. I don't care. Uh, or the actually the, the 2202 also came with a Mecha Collection Kit of the Yunagi. So here you go. Check this out. So uh, the clear parts just fit in from behind. And uh, you can light that up. So if you have like, this little uh, the light pipes, it's just kind of, you know feed up into here to the to, to the clear parts to light those up so that's really cool really neat so uh yeah this is kind of a pricey kit and um that's it i mean she's for october i don't plan on really buying harley anything at all um except for like that uh that r4 i9 kit for um, uh you know the um the the astromech from star wars I uploaded both of the videos covering 
the event and I have a whole bunch of pictures. I have uploaded some of them to my Tumblr account which is stevethefish.net.tumblr.com. Check those out. Uh, you can see pictures of the, my, my Star Wars stuff and also the Klingon Katinga kit that I'm really excited about. I uploaded the video and I know that my camera, it I will tell you and if you watch my videos, you'll see that when I have to zoom in, I have to turn off the camera, refocus it, and then start recording again. I have to do like an edit cut every time because this camera does not have uh, an autofocus. Okay, I have a, 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 a Nikon Coolpix uh, S66 hundred, I guess. Yeah, and Sorry, it does not autofocus. When I start recording, it I it does not autofocus at all. And that's why when you see my video, you do you don't hear that. And I see a lot of people they do that, and they're like, okay, autofocus, okay, come on, come on, focus on me, come on. Are you doing it? Come on, you stupid camera, stop being gay. And I don't do that because you know, you don't see that in my videos because my camera doesn't autofocus. I have to stop it, and then I I edit that out so you you know you don't. You don't have to put up with that in my videos. However, when I'm walking around, um, I have a problem, okay? So, I have been deluged by these malcontents, these, 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 these complete dinguses, okay? Sorry, I, I, I'm not able to autofocus on the fly, but these people are expecting me to do like HLJ quality videos. I mean, if you watch the Hobby Link Japan videos, they have nice cameras. I don't. I'm just some guy with a camera, and I'm doing the best I can to share the experience, uh, you know, of going to these these um, these events. And this is the first time. And I think I might know why. I think I might know why. So my theory is a pretty. Sh I think I might know what it is. And I, if you are not new to my channel, you know I, I've had run-ins with the whole gunpla crowd, and that's why I don't do much gunpla stuff on my channel at all not interested in doing gunpla stuff. I got uh what Strider Prime and he's cool, okay? I don't and I've I've recommended people checking out his channel because he has like a similar demeanor that I do and he shows the actual doing building the process and not like doing a narration, no catchy music that you've heard in like hundreds of other model build videos. He you actually you you get the experience of building a model with him. And I'll be honest, I only ever watch his stuff when he does uh, Yamato stuff. I'm just, I, I don't really care about doing, um, you know, Gunpla stuff. Uh, yeah, now I am currently, well, somewhat doing a, a Gunpla build myself. But I'm also lighting it up, and that's why you're seeing it on my video, uh, on my channel. Now, okay, like I said, he's cool. I don't have a problem with him. But he said that uh, and he, he watches my videos, at least my videos of the, the events. And he said, oh, the, you know, he had really good things to say about my video. And then he said he's going to post uh, the video, the link, on my, uh, on, on his Facebook page. I think that's the reason why I've been getting all this crap. Like I said, I've been covering events like this for such a long time, and I have not had people giving me so much crap about having a, a low-quality camera. I mean, it's, it's not that bad of a camera, but, um, again, it doesn't autofocus on the fly. So, without further ado, let's get into everybody's favorite part of these updates. Okay, so the first dingbat comment is by Danny Heron. Really nice video, but you really need to learn to vlog better. 
wear a mic. Who's Mike? Are, are you talking about a microphone? Because that would be M-I-C, not M-I-K-E. Mike is a guy's name, okay? I, I know a few mics, I guess. I'm not going to wear them. I'm sorry. Especially, I'm, you know, I'm not going to wear them on my face. Vlog. I don't vlog. I just do not vlog. All right. I, I guess you could maybe call this a vlog. I mean, this is like the only time that I ever like really put in my face on, on camera. I just said, look, just wear some headphones. And I I go through these videos before I upload them, okay? And I know when there's problems. But I was able to hear my own voice. And I, I bounced it off with some other people. They said they can hear me just fine. So I'm guessing this guy is upset because the Bandai booth was really loud. And I'm not talking loudly because I don't want to attract attention to myself. I'm not a vlogger. I don't go around, oh, look at me, I'm on YouTube. Hey, everybody, I don't do that. Oh, look at me, hey, I'm in Japan and you're not. I don't do that. Now, I did see, when I was at the event, I saw Kaio-chan. If you watch Kaio-chan, she's the Japanese modeler. She's got, like, she's pretty, but she's got, like, that really, like, bleached blonde hair. And I'm sorry, but... For Japanese people, that just looks really terrible. I've only seen a very few of them that actually look nice. It just, it just doesn't suit the complexion at all. Okay, I, 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 I like you know natural. But anyhow, I don't want to just you know trash her. She's nice. I, I, I watch her videos sometimes. She responds to my comments in you know because I write in Japanese. She's nice. She, but she did like these this video, and the whole time you don't see hardly anything of the event at all. All you do is just see her. She's got the, the camera pointed at her and her two friends, and all they do, you just see them looking at the camera the whole time. And I guess that's what the whole YouTuber thing does. Uh, they they just do that. And I guess you would call it cult of personality, I guess. Um, I'm not doing this. You, you know, I don't think anybody watches these videos because, oh, I just love this guy named Steve. I mean, Greg. He's so cool. No, this is this channel is not about me. It's just about my, my, uh, my hobbies and you know maybe my, my uh, opinions on current events and such. But that's it. But yeah, I'm not gonna hold a microphone. That's stupid. I'm not gonna hold a guy named Mike either. Okay, we got my hands full. I'm walking around with my camera, and usually I've got like uh, uh, pamphlets and stuff that they're ha they're they're, uh, they're handing out at the booths. Or I've got a bag that I put all the pamphlets in. And they hand out the bags too. Anyhow, I'm rambling. So, I'm like, you know, why don't you come to Japan and cover these events? If you're such an expert at life. I bet you'd make great, excellent videos. And you look at this guy's video, his, his YouTube channel. Oh, guess what? He doesn't have any videos. He doesn't upload anything. Why am I surprised? See, look, this is it. Nothing. He's got crap. Nothing. Next guy. This is a guy named Jim Han... Too bad you can't hear commentary. Again, try using headphones. It's not that hard. I mean... Just do it, okay? And, you know, I, I don't hear people, you know, from, like, uh, the just Czech Republic saying, oh, why don't you speak in the, the Czech language? Or people in France and saying, oh, I'm sorry, but this is all in English. I, or, or even Japanese people who watch my videos, they don't complain about it being in English instead of Japanese, okay? So... It doesn't matter if you hear my voice or not, because a hell of a lot of people can't understand me, yet they still get some sort of en encouragement, or, or not encouragement, but um, enjoyment out of watching the videos. And to be honest, a lot of these videos, they just have a whole bunch of like music, and you don't even really hear anything. I don't do that. So, guess what? Hey, let's, let's look at this guy's YouTube. Oh, guess what? There is no videos. Okay, next, Peridimus. Too bad, not T-O-O, -O, it's just T-O. Too bad your camera 
so much out of focus. <sighs> Again, look, you pay me 400 bucks to buy a new camera, or you come over here to Japan and you cover the next event yourself. You know what? It, it's a lot more expensive to come to Japan, so just go ahead and just give me the money. I promise. I promise you. Just PayPal me the money, and I'm not going to waste it on, you know, buying models and crap. I will put the 100% of that money towards a new camera. Do it, okay? Just freaking do it. And by the way, I'm just going to look at your channel and see how many videos you got. Oh, guess what? Fuck all. Nothing. All right, next. Fajar NN. Thanks for the info, but your camera often blur, not focus, and cannot see the detail or writing. And also without picture stabilizer. It makes me dizzy if watching it in an hour. Nihongo de yuto pinboki desu. I don't think this guy's Japanese, though. I, I tried looking at his, his, uh, his channel. Oh, guess what? No videos. Look, if 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 he's he's if he's playing if he's watching this this you know playing the video for like an hour and it's making him sick, don't watch it. Well, what are you complaining about? Go puke in the toilet and go watch some you know Smurfs or something. You know, you can go watch some My Little Pony or 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 the Clone Wars or some crap. I, I don't care. Jeez, nothing on his channel. Nothing. Next asshole. To Emperor. Camera is out of focus in close up all the time. No, not just some of the time, all the time. Really? Really? Because I've watched the video and it's really not that bad, okay? I mean, seriously. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying it's that great, but it's not, like, totally bad. Maybe change the autofocus mode on, to, to central point. You know, there is no autofocus feature on my camera while it's recording. Okay? If my attempt at sharing this event with you is truly that unsatisfactory, I'll expect you to either pay me $400 by Tuesday to buy a new camera for me, or you come to Japan and make your own damn videos. Oh, okay, now let me look at your channel. You're such an expert. Oh my gosh, what's this? No videos at all? How can this be? Next. Tanner... Renat. How oh, isn't that clever? He's spelled backwards. He's <laughs> wow, this guy's in like in Mensa or something. Not the hobbies I assumed. Not a tentacle in the place? Sigh. What hobby do you have, dude? I mean, no, sorry. Don't answer that question. What the hell? Alright, next. Star Streak 007. Boom, 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 boom. Nice video to see what's coming up, but 60% of the items you try to show is not in focus, and many times when you try to get a close up shot, either you're too close to focus or it's not focusing. Alright, that's it. You know what? To make these people happy, I'm just not going to make these videos anymore. Uh, it, because my videos make people puke, and they can't hear it, and they can't see anything. I'm just wasting your time, so I'll, I guess I'm just going to just not make these videos anymore, okay? Maybe I'm, um, or, you know, maybe I can just call up my friend Steven Spielberg. You know, he's, uh, you know, when, if, if he's not too busy uh, making movies or raping kids or something, I can just ask him. Hey, you know, come over here, bring your bring your best camera, and we'll just make a movie together. You know, we're 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 good buddies. What the hell? But really, you know, I'll give this dude credit. At least he's the first whiner who actually has videos uploaded on his channel. He actually has some sort of a content. Now it's like really ancient stuff. I mean, he doesn't do any you know modeling stuff. But, what the heck? So, I don't get it, man. I just, I just don't get it. These people suck. They really, really suck. So, I, I don't know what to say, really. I mean, seriously, I'm considering just not even bothering. I mean, if this is all the, the crap that I get, but again, 
all of these comments I got is on the first video and the first video right up front is the Bandai stuff and to be honest I was breezing through the Gundam stuff because frankly I just couldn't care less about Gundam or I was even doing like you know even the Dragon Ball and and uh, stuff like that I can't care less about Gundam or, or the Dragon Ball and stuff uh, I skipped over a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that I just didn't care about. The cats, th that was pretty cool. Those little, uh, you know, warrior cats with the, the artillery and stuff. That's just pretty goofy and weird. I like that. That is pretty cool. Oh, boy. So I am in the mood for uh, some nice comments that really made me smile. Okay, so an, ob an obese blunt. <laughs> OMG, here is another person that sees how cancerous Gundam builders are. <laughs> so yeah, this is the 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 lighting Gundam thing that I I started last year and I haven't really touched since then. Um, well, I mean I've I've painted it and such, but you don't you're not seeing any videos on, on this yet. But you know I do want to get back to it. Because it is pretty awesome, and I like my idea. Next, the Sega Holic. <laughs> it's Greg, right? Steve is probably your fish. Thank you. Somebody gets it. Somebody gets it. I'm so glad. Anyhow, he he took something that was in my uh, my uh, Greg's life on my my channel, or I'm not my channel, my homepage, which is incidentally called SteveTheFish.net. Look it up. It really is a website. And uh, he took some information from that, and he made a video as a, pretending to the Sega CD. So, yeah, good for him. So, Kevin T., <laughs> I love the Pepe. Plastic straws are a symbol of white privilege. You don't even want to know what drinking beer means you're guilty of. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, uh, drinking beer... Um, that certainly disqualifies me from becoming a justice of the Supreme Court, does it not? Um, it's okay if Obama writes in his book about how he was uh, snorting cocaine, smoking pot, and uh, living like a thug. Now, hey, no, it, let, let him be president, that's fine. But uh, if Kavanaugh drinks beer, oh, dear God, you know, that is so terrible. And when you drink beer and all that and uh, you get all these uh these these pinheads that are accusing him of stuff that they can't cooperate whatsoever and they've got so many holes in their stories like oh i'm 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 claustrophobic and and i uh, uh i have a fear of airplanes but yet they're flying around and they live in tiny apartments <laughs> oh geez hey but you know what though i think it's time for some stuff and things Okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. This cracks me up. The Hollywood Reporter is saying, Star Wars The Last Jedi, the negative buzz amplified by Russian trolls, study finds. <laughs> I tell you, those, those trolls, those Russians, you know, there's something in the DNA of Russians that make them like these omnipotent, godlike people, that they are like ever-present, everywhere okay like i told you i i, I fell down because i was walking on that that uh, that grate that was covering the, the gutter and i fell down um, i'm pretty sure that was due to russian hacking the russians they hacked that grate and they made it a hole and i fell through the hole and hurt both of my my, my legs and my hand it's the russians uh, a couple of days ago i burnt my toast i swear the russians hacked my toast. Those Russians need to be stopped because their omnipotent X-Men powers are destroying everything. Perfectly beautiful good movies like Star Wars are now ruined because of Russians. Oh, but guess what? There's like zero evidence for this whatsoever, even though it says that the study has found so. <laughs> I swear, people think I'm a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
airplanes completely evaporate upon impact on the, the Pentagon. <laughs> These aluminum airplanes, they can, can burst through solid steel skyscrapers, causing them to fall exactly like a controlled demo demolition. If you think otherwise... You're a conspiracy nut, but I'll tell you what's true, though, is that these Russians are everywhere. Russians are ruining the world. Russians, Russian, Russian, Russia. They're even after Star Wars. Russians are destroying Star Wars. No, it's not Kathleen Kennedy. No, it's not Ryan Johnson. It's Russians. They are to blame. I swear, these, the, again, the social justice warriors, they are so convinced that they are in the majority. They they really think that like, you know, Antifa that everybody just loves those assholes. That it's like I've I've covered this in the past on my channel. They really really think that they are the majority. And when they get totally screwed over like Nike, for example, with their, you know, believe in everything crap or uh, or what believe in or what is it? I don't even give a crap anymore. They lose like billions of dollars, okay? When it comes to Chick fil A or, or Papa John's or what was it? Uh, um, In N Out Burger. The, the, the shit libs, they, they boycott them. We, we got to boycott them, and guess what? Their sales, like, go through the roof, and people are lined up around the block to go buy their, their stupid chicken sandwiches and stuff that's fried in soybean oil. Yeah, I mean, I, I would do it, too. Well, what the heck? I mean, if I lived in America, I'm like, yeah, dude, give me that crap. I'm going to eat that. Yeah, the Polynesian sauce is pretty good, though. I, I, I really can't fault Chick-fil-A. At least it's better than that crappy McDonald's crap with the the mystery meat and all that so but yeah the video game sales or the star wars or whatever they lose money or their their uh, nike sweatshop made tennis shoes they lose billions of dollars and it's all because they just like oh you know what we're we're totally in the majority yeah everybody hates trump Everybody thinks that uh, there's there's such thing as Russian collusion, and it's 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 totally yeah. So we're just gonna blame everything on Russians, and people are gonna fall for it. They're gonna believe it because it's so true. Because there's there's no other reason why it, the 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 populist movement is completely rejecting these uh, these bat shit insane moon bats. Right, I just said bat twice. Yeah. Hey, speaking of SJWs, check out this asshole. Destruction somebody, of private property. It's against the law. Somebody gets raped by somebody, and they're like, "I'm a 16 year old, and I can't have this baby." Think you should keep it? It's a baby. Yeah. If someone was raped and she gave birth, and she decided to kill her three year old child. Oh, I meant to get your phone. Someone call the cops. Someone call the cops. Do not touch me. Someone call the cops. Guess who lost his job? Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't want to... I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't uh, push anybody to fire them, I guess. I, I don't know where I stand on that. I really don't. Um, but when it comes to assaulting women in the name of protecting women, this, this is crazy. And... It's funny because, you know, the, uh, what's his name, uh, Jeremy from uh, Geeks and Gamers, he pointed out it is these screeching, hysterical, violent leftists. Are they, these are the people who Kathleen Kennedy think are going to be flocking to go see the Star Wars movies. These people dictate who is going to be in the movie. Oh, well, we need to have you know, people of color, or they, they, they go around saying, we need to have l l less white people involved in Star Wars. Who cares? I don't care if the next movie, Star Wars movie, is directed by a black woman, but if she grew up watching Star Wars and she's, and you know, she knows Star Wars like the back of her hand, dude, let her do it. I would, like, totally shake her hand and, you know, ask for her autograph. Couldn't care less about her gender or her skin color. What I do care about is 
condescending shit libs who just trash everybody and they have zero respect for everybody and it's just it's it's just infuriating make saudi arabia great again this is something i've been wanting to talk about on my channel for a while um actually i have a dear friend aj who may be watching this video right now i met him through youtube and he is a uh saudi guy and uh we just met each other in the, the comments on videos on youtube and we've become uh, good friends long distance good friends so with this whole visit uh actually it, it it's not a coincidence that the very first foreign trip that trump made as a president was to visit saudi arabia and basically he kind of went over there and said hey you know cut this crap out, let's be friends, let's move towards uh, a brighter future together. Since then, amazing things have been happening in Saudi Arabia. We already know, most everybody knows about the women driving part, okay? Of course that's great. But there's a whole lot more that I, I would not have known about this if it wasn't for my friend AJ. The people are being able to express more freedom of speech. It's amazing. People are actually speaking out against, you know, uh, the like the Islamic call to prayers and how obnoxious they are. It's great. The religious police, you know, so they have like the regular police and they have the religious police. They now no longer have the power to arrest people. They can only make recommendations for arrests, but uh, they don't have the power. So. They used to be able to chase people down. They used to be able to arrest people before the the, the actual police do. And uh, now people can just uh, you know say, hey, you know, get lost. They don't have the power anymore over people. It's amazing. Fatwas, they cannot change the rule of law. So in any sort of a, a religious decree, it, it cannot supersede the law of the land. That's amazing. Now there is now no more any forced marriages people cannot force their kids to get married to so-and-so and this especially is, is uh, protecting young women in Saudi Arabia they've banned child marriage and this is a really important thing because you know for the longest time you can't really touch that issue because you know if you say that marrying a child is immoral well you are going against the the prophet Mohammed because he married a six-year-old girl and he molested her and then he eventually raped her when she was nine years old. This is stuff that your uh, your average shit lib who praises Islam is not going to even know about at all. But uh, this is actual Islamic history. Look into it. Banning, yeah, they've they've the, the very fact of banning child marriage is a huge huge step towards progress in the country. They have banned female genital mutilation, which is you know, abbreviated FGM. This is amazing. This is just really amazing because uh, you know, it's, these these poor girls. You know, they. I, I I won't go into detail, but the whole thing is just uh, exemplary of uh, the misogyny in Islam. And of course, the, the so-called feminists, they just rush to, to sing the praises of Islam. They, they always protect Islam, and they never really uh, uh, stick up for, for true women's rights. I guess more on that later. Uh, movie theaters. That's great, because now Saudi city and citizens are now free to boycott Star Wars movies. Amen. That's beautiful. They are now finally are up there allowed uh, American culture into their country. That's amazing. Um, women can now attend sporting events. It used to be forbidden, but like my friend, he's been able to enjoy a soccer game with his wife. That's amazing. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, there's no forced marriages, but there's also, you know, parents can't prevent their daughters from marrying who they, uh, wh whom they wish to. It's amazing. Uh, child molestation laws are now in place. Before, yeah, unfortunately, lots of child molestation going on, uh, but now they have laws against that. Uh, one last thing, they've... They're restoring pre-Islamic architecture. 
the ar archaeologists are actually they're they're restoring the pre-Islamic world, you know, the the old buildings and such. And this is amazing because you know when when Islam came to power in Saudi Arabia, they completely destroyed the 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 pre you know the the, the pagan Arabian culture. And so much of it is only known through, like, you know, for example, the Bible or, you know, lots of other uh, uh, foreign countries, their, their historians had, had written about uh, the Arabian Peninsula before, before Muhammad. But a lot of that was destroyed. And it's really sad because, you know, the, a lot of uh, Muslims will say that, oh, well, because of Muhammad that women had rights and such. And, of course, this is total bullcrap because, as we even know from the story of Muhammad, that his wife that he married, his first wife, she was a business owner. And she had men working for her. Okay? So that right there means that the women had money, they had power, and they were able to, you know, be independent from a man. And uh, she, she actually ran her own business. And she was the one who proposed marriage to him. Meaning that at at that time, uh, women had the the uh, the authority to to you know the the, the permission to actually uh, uh, pr propose marriage to whom they want. Really, really freaking amazing. So, yeah, and all of this has happened. All of this has transpired since uh, Trump had had visited the country. Lots of great things are happening. You know, we, we heard all sorts of stuff about how, oh, Trump is going to start nuclear war with North Korea. But now, good things are happening in North Korea. Good things are happening in Brazil. Take a look at what's going on in Brazil. It's amazing. Italy, um, the, the populist movement, the people who are hungry for freedom and liberty and equality. Uh, these people are looking to uh, God Emperor Trump. As, as he's called for inspiration for this and it's just really really amazing I'm very happy about what's going on uh, next of course is Iran and look at the videos of the women who are taking off their, their head scarves and such dancing in public with their hair uncovered it's amazing you know that these, these, these women are beautiful and these people are, are looking for freedom, and just pay attention to what's going to happen in Iran in the next few months. These people are going to be hopefully taking their country back, because Iran was actually a really nice country before the, the, the Shah was deposed and the Ayatollahs took over. Really, really cool. Last thing, the... <laughs> so finally, yeah, uh, Justice Kavanaugh has been approved it, it's funny that that the, the all of these uh, these women their testimonies didn't they, they, they did not add up at all lots of contradictions they, they they could not get any corroborating witnesses and in fact the people that they were looking to as witnesses they they all said that this is full of crap the very last ditch effort I think it was Diane Feinstein said well you know what um, Kavanaugh's probably a nice guy but the, the very fact that he has been wrongly accused disqualifies him. That that was the last act of desperation. It's just stupid. Now Kevin Ship, uh, he's a former CIA polygraph examiner. He stated on Twitter that it's quite apparent that this woman, uh, Doctor Ford, was coached to lie. And if you if, if you guys are following Q, hopefully, uh, if 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 people are interested in knowing more about what's going on, definitely look into Q. This woman, her family has history with the CIA, and they have uh, these these uh, these cutouts, basically. These people who I don't know if it's MK Ultra or what, some sort of mind control. But and this is this is stuff that the CIA has done in the past. Okay, this is a lot of this, a lot of the really shady stuff came out with the the Church Committee in the 70s. This is not conspiracy stuff. I mean, it, well, it's conspiracy. So the pe people they 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 think that the word conspiracy is like something to laugh at. When when two when two or more people conspire against somebody, or um, or uh, or a government or whatever, it's these people are doing 
illegal things, right? They are working together. That is what a conspiracy is. A conspiracy is not about, you know, flying saucers or lizard people or flat earths and all that kind of stuff. A conspiracy means that people are conspiring to, to do bad things. And the church committee revealed a whole lot of stuff in the 1970s about, like, Operation Mockingbird with the CIA people. They, they have assets working in the, the media. Uh, the stuff like uh, the heart attack gun, that actual gun that can fire like a, a, a projectile, it's like a dart that's like made out of frozen poison, and it'll once it, it gets into the, the, the victim's skin, it'll melt and cause them to go into cardiac arrest, and it'll only just leave like a tiny little red mark on their body, and you can't even notice in an autopsy. And another one of the things that came out was uh, MK Ultra. It was uh, the CIA's... Um, their mind control program, and this is stuff, you know, mind control is real, it actually happens, and um, you learn to identify it, it's uh, it, it's pretty pretty scary stuff. So, it, apparently, this woman, Dr. Ford, I don't know if it was MK Ultra or not, but she was coached on how to pass that polygraph, and we don't even know how many times that she took the test before they got the result that they were looking for but it even came out that she had actually uh, successfully you know coached people on how to pass a lie detector test a polygraph test and that was kind of um, ignored rather conveniently by the mainstream media but that was exposed so yeah congratulations Justice Kavanaugh and when they first mentioned this guy's name you know there was another woman who was probably a sure bet for the the Supreme Court, it, you know, it's hard to accuse a woman of being a sexual predator or whatever, you know, trumped up charges that, that they that they came up with for Kavanaugh. But um, people were kind of surprised that uh, this woman was not selected and instead Kavanaugh was, especially because Kavanaugh was, was a former lawyer who helped cover up the death of Vince Foster. Now, officially, the the story goes that Vince Foster, you know, he was a White House lawyer under President Clinton, and uh, he uh, committed suicide. But there's a lot of really circumstantial, really fishy evidence that will show that maybe, possibly, there were there was foul play. Like, for example, uh, he was uh, found in the woods, and there his shoes were completely clean you know that his shoes did not have it like soil all over it or mud or whatever that was really really fishy um look into it yeah vince foster um he was probably what they call arkansited and uh because that's the way that the, the clintons went that, that that's how they they behave and you know the uh, hillary clinton is uh, the daughter of a uh, the, the man who what was it al capone i think he took over the al capone's mafia and this is stuff that uh, they don't like really talking about on the news because she's the the media darling, and of course the the, the mass media, um, they're basically propaganda for the, the the DNC, and it's it's really crazy. But yeah, look into it. It's really it's really crazy. Really crazy. Look up Hillary Clinton's father and the role that he played. So um, yeah, Kevin, I was involved with that. Basically, he was involved with covering it up. And, uh, you know, the, the body was cremated before a proper autopsy could be performed. And he played a part in all of that. But if you follow Q, you know that there's a lot of people who are actually good people, but they've been kind of compromised and kind of coerced in, into going along with a lot of the evil that happens in the United States. And, you know, everywhere else, really, I suppose. But uh, apparently, I, I believe that this, uh, this Kavanaugh guy, I never really heard of him before, but he is one of them that maybe he was compromised and now he's he's being set free and uh he knows you know where the bodies are buried so to speak and that alone is the reason why these people are so freaked out a lot more than with uh Gil Gorsuch the the previous year now Kavanaugh's there and he knows how dirty the the, the Clintons play because he actually uh was was involved with it so the whole nomination of uh, Kavanaugh was a direct message to Hillary Clinton, and it was just really amazing. I'm, I'm happy to see that. It's just the guy is just amazing. The way he can totally just uh, uh, just 
send fear into these people's hearts, and that's the reason why they've been drumming up all these these paid protesters and such, these these idiots that go around, and they're just so brainwashed that they they just really believe that anybody who is accused of something wrong that immediately that they must be guilty, and it's just a a total joke. And it's an insult to proper due process. The country is based on the notion of innocent until proven guilty, not guilty until proven innocent. Well, I suppose that's it for this month. Uh, again, this is a September update, but you know we're getting this like a week into October already, so I apologize for that. But I think, um, yeah, I just uh, need to set some time up, up to, so I can do this. So, um, hopefully I didn't offend too many people with my criticisms of Gunpla. I, I like Gundam. I like, I like the shows. I got a bunch of them on DVD. I like, I really enjoy the story, at least the, the Universal Century Gundam storylines. Um, I do build models to Gunpla and stuff, but not a whole lot. It just, I don't know. You know, uh, Gunpla is like potato salad, okay? It's good, it's nice, it's tasty, okay? But potato salad attracts flies. And so you got something good, but it, it attracts, like, really crappy stuff. And I think a lot of uh, Gunpla builders are just really obnoxious. For example, I was the first English language YouTuber who did an unboxing video of the... Bandai Star Wars kit, and I got a whole bunch of the, the whole Gunpla crowd uh, really crapping on me for what I had said. They tend to be a lot of really entitled, uh, raving fanboys who think that because they can snap together a robot kit with, with now any glue or paint or anything, that they need to be respected as accomplished modelers and such. And I don't want to sound like an elitist, and I always, you know, applaud people for, you know, building models at whatever stage they're at. But it, to just arrogantly proclaim, you know, to just demand that they be treated as a, a really serious modeler when all they do is just snap together pre-colored plastic parts. Um, I'm sorry, I do not respect that at all. So if you tell these people, like, you know what, I don't really care for Gunpla, and this is the reaction that you get. Seriously, they they can be like really just depraved, you know, frothing morons. Not every person who is excited about gunpla is like that at all. I I'm not saying that whatsoever. I don't mean to to to, to you know blanket stereotype all gunpla modelers, but that definitely is a there there is a propensity for that and i'm not saying that people who build other models are really you know they smell like roses either because you, you get a lot of the the scale modelers and these people are like total rivet counters and they can be just as a, obnoxious but definitely obnoxious in different ways so anyhow that's it for this month thanks for tuning in so uh as always live long and prosper may the force be with you and so long and thanks for all the fish Bye.